Okay, let's get started. It's Dark Souls 3. Let's watch that hot cinematic. Yes, indeed. It is called Lothric, where the transitory lands of the Lords of Cinder converge. In venturing north, the pilgrims discover the truth of the old words. The fire fades, and the lords go without thrones. Alright, so you may all be disappointed to know that there is no soul of a proud knight in this game. <clears throat> now, after three games, or at, really after two games, we're approaching the third game. Uh, we're starting as Unkindled. Uh, it's not exactly defined what that is, it's open to interpretation, but some people see that it's, it's basically someone who tried and failed to link the first flame. So we will be... a shamed knight. Not, no longer a proud knight, for we failed. We could talk a little bit more about why we're being woken up to do this in the first place. But the idea is... The idea is that... Uh, someone was meant to link the first flame to stop the flame from going out. We talked a lot about that in the first... First Dark Souls, right? Uh, the person who was supposed to do it neglected to. So... In its defense, the first fire woke up other people who were supposed to link the first uh, the first flame. Uh, they also said, nah, we're not going to do it. So instead, we are the backup plan to the backup plan. And we will attempt to link the flame. Uh, I would like gray hair. This all just sort of looks like a weird pale white. We'll just go... We'll just go white hair. How about that? And we'll give him a nice 
big beard also. There we go. So we are going to be a disgraced knight of Lothric. Woken up to hopefully fulfill our duty. Burial gift. This doesn't really matter to me. Uh, fire gem is the most practical one, but I don't really... I mean, we'll be fine, I think, without it. You look like a Holocaust survivor. Well, we are being woken up from the grave. Um, again, the fire gem's kind of... I think I'll maybe just do the sovereignless soul. Of one who slept beside you, used to acquire many souls. I don't think it's really that many souls. Okay. So, our class... Uh, I mean, we are a shamed knight, so we will be a knight. It also is nice because it's, it's got a pretty nice stat spread, and then also luck is very low, and luck is not that useful of a stat, unfortunately, so we kind of want that to just be as low as possible when we start. We also start with a long sword, which is a extremely good starting weapon, very versatile, and we'll be using it through a lot of the game. And then the shield is, uh, it's a 100% physical block shield, so it's, it's, it's great. Here we go. Take the Sovereignless Soul and pretend, and never pop it, pretend it has some meaning. Yeah, there are some luck builds. That would be interesting to try. It's something I think you have to spec into later, though. You can't you can't start and try to make a luck build until you get something like Henri's sword. So this game's a lot more like DS1 than it is like Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls 2, especially as you see more of this game, is going to seem like such a bizarre uh, a bizarre change. Like it's the ugly duckling, right? Uh, backstabs are like they were in the first Dark Souls. Parrying is not exact. It's a, the Timing is still different, but it's a lot more like it was in Dark Souls 1. They've also added the ability where the repost that you can do in parrying, you can also now do... Uh, you can also now do uh, if you break someone's guard just by breaking through their entire endurance bar. So if you stagger an enemy, you can perform a repost as if you would have parried them. I'm not great at parrying. I've been trying to learn it, but I'm just not very good at it. So don't expect to see too much of that. Uh, so that's our first major change is the Ashen Estus Flask. So you'll see we have a magic bar. In the other Dark Souls games, you have charges on magic abilities. Uh, I should have just backstabbed that guy, but uh, you, have char you have charges on your magic abilities. Uh, in this game, instead, you have a magic meter, similar to how it was in, in Dark Souls, uh, in, in Demon Souls, rather. Uh, so you can, you can allocate the number of Estus charges you have, uh, to Ashen Estus charges as well. So you have to pick, like, how many you want for health and how many you want for magic, and that determines how many, uh, things that you can t turn back. That determines how many, uh, magical casts you can have. All right, so let's go and fight this crystal lizard man. So this is a real big crystal lizard. We're fighting him a little early, but that's okay. As typical, we're just going to circle around a bunch of enemies. It always works. It works every time. See, our guard was broken there. An enemy could repost us in, in that point. And a lot of enemies, if you hit them in their head enough times, then they'll stagger and you can repost them, so. Not a great start here, but that's okay. Let's just pull them away from this side area. The major difference between Dark Souls 1 and then Dark Souls 2 and then getting back to 3, you'll notice, is that uh, stamina usage. In 2, stamina consumption was ridiculously huge. Uh, compared to one. So, like, everything was a lot slower because you could only perform... Ouch. Oh, we're dead. Nice. Uh, you could only perform a certain number of actions uh, in two compared to how much each action took off of your stamina meter. It's a lot lower in Dark Souls 3, which is a lot more like the first game, so... Um, you can roll a lot more. You can get a lot more attacks off, stuff like that. 
Did you ever get to use Soul Stream? Uh, I did find it. I don't know if I ever attuned it. Anyway, good start, good start. That's what I get for, like, focusing on trying to explain this game instead of just playing it. <laughs> There's our backstab. Oh, yeah, Estus is a lot faster also. <laughs> it's funny how I died to one of the earliest enemies in the game and someone had just commented, why is Jay better than a lot of Dark Souls YouTubers? Well, <laughs> not looking too good right now, am I? Yeah, the slow Estus in Dark Souls 2, also the life gems, that's all been removed. Estus is similar to the way it was in Dark Souls 1, and there's no longer uh, there's no longer any of that uh, slow usage stuff. Now, fair warning, I've, uh, I've been playing this on New Game Plus to try to get the Platinum trophy. So I'm used to playing, yeah, I'm used to playing with, like, higher-end gear as I've restarted the game. So now we're coming back with virtually nothing, and uh, so we're going to have a bit of an embarrassing start here. <laughs> Frost and Miracles. Alright, I promise I won't die to this guy anymore. So I talked about doing like a goofy build with, with Frost. The problem with Frost is it doesn't scale with any stat, which is silly. Um, so I can't realistically make a Frost build, I don't think. Uh, what I'm going to do instead is probably do a... Uh, an early miracle build and transition into a fire dark build. So level, I'm going to be leveling uh, dexterity and faith early, along with health and endurance, which are the obvious things. Uh, and then, um, and then level intelligence. We'll get to 10 intelligence early just so we can talk to Orbeck. Uh, and then once we level faith in tandem with intelligence, we'll be able to do a, a chaos infusion on our sword. And that's my end game plan. Okay, and again, see, I'm used to having, like, way more health, so I need to just not play greedy right now. We're right at the beginning of the game. So, I'm just gonna take my two swings, and then just keep sending circle around this guy, let him do his stupid attacks. See, he's staggered right now. If you run up to the front of him, well... <laughs> good show, Dark Souls 3. Uh, then you can stagger him like that. If When he's staggered, you, you then you can do the repost. So, there's our... There's our repost. Why can I not lock on? Let's just, let's just heal. How about that? It's weird coming back to this game at, at, early, at early play. Again, after playing, I play New Game Plus and Plus Plus. And now, like, not having any health. It's like a huge change to how you approach every situation. It's really wacky. There we go. So there's our Titanite scale. That's uh, that's what you use to level up boss weapons. It's the equivalent of the uh, the dragon bone shards or whatever they were called in uh, well, the petrified dragon bones in Dark Souls 2. What's better than using lightning on a frost weapon? I don't think you can. That's the problem. You can't infuse the frost weapons. But the, their damage doesn't scale with any stats. It's really unfortunate, I think. Alright, and there's one guy up here who's supposed to teach you how to parry, but he's... I don't know, we can try. There's a telling you, like, hey, you should parry and repost. I'll, I mean, I'll try. There's only certain types of attacks from these guys that I can realistically repost. There we go. So, there's not going to be that much parrying from me <laughs> in this game, unfortunately. I'm just not good enough at it. Well, that was a really bad start, dying to that crystal lizard so much, huh? Backstab Arena, yeah. I'll be relying a lot on backstabs. An important move. Bonfire lit. Oh, we got you know we got to get all those gestures. There's probably one gesture I will not get. 
through the course of this. Because it's you have to not do an NPC quest in order to get it. So that's there's one that we just won't get. Coming up on our first boss here. How exciting. I can try to parry Gundir. Could be fun. Or I could just die a couple times on him because I that would be foolish of me to try, but. You respect, what'd you say, Keith? Dex int, and you're disappointed in it? No, don't fall. Okay, well, we'll go back up and get that. Come sa! Plunging attacks back to the way they used to be. They were severely nerfed in Dark Souls 2. Now they're pretty strong again. Let's go back up and get that stuff. There might have been an item further back that I missed. Or maybe it's a... It might be a new game plus ring, actually. I should go back and check in a hot second. Yeah, there still isn't a well, what is it? We got our kicks back, though. Ha ha! Fire bombs, those will be important to us. There, I think there is an item that I, that I passed up earlier back by the crystal lizard. Let me just back up real quick and check. But I, it might be a new game plus ring, so my memory, I don't know. I've only, I played this game exactly twice, which was new game, then new game plus. I guess technically three times, but I, I blaze through it as fast as possible on plus plus. Uh, what I will say is I, I would like to do some PvP this playthrough, so like, especially when we're in, um, the swamp in Farron, I, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do some, some PvPing. So there might be times where I just sort of stand around and wait to get summoned in to like defend the swamp and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that was a new game plus ring. But, uh, I'm not gonna shy away from it as much as I did in the first two games. But that's because the, the PvP in the first game is pretty awful. And the second game was fun, but frankly, there just weren't enough people playing it. And I was pretty high soul memory for it to, to be able to. What's your favorite and least favorite Dark Souls 3 bosses? I don't know. Folks in chat should answer that. What do you guys all think? It's hard to say who my favorite is. I, I really like uh, Ariandel and Freed. And Champion Gundyr. All right, buddy. We're just going to need this sword that's impaled within you, if you don't mind. Thank you. Don't worry about it, buddy. Okay. And then we can just swing away at this guy. He's pissed. Oh, yeah! There's the parry. Okay. So you can beat that guy exclusively by doing that. I don't... I'm not gonna do that. I feel like that would be kind of lame. So instead, we're gonna try to be a little more legit with him. Um, hopefully that sort of redeemed myself from dying to that crystal lizard, getting one parry on gun gear. Uh, space 2 is irritating, only because I cannot understand what this guy's attacks are. It's really hard to tell. See, like, I don't... It's hard to, like, track what, what are his attacks and what are just him moving. One thing also uh, in this game, and they, they try to, they try to, there's a lot of gotcha moments with the way bosses attack specifically, is a lot of the attacks hesitate for like a half second. So you roll early, and then they're like, ah, gotcha, asshole. That's that's literally how almost every boss works. So I'll definitely be caught by that a lot. You can see Gundyr got me at least twice that way. Excellent. We get our coiled sword. Ember restored. So, 
Ember is sort of like being human in the first game or having a human effigy in the second game. You can be invaded. Well, it's different in two. Just forget about Dark Souls 2. But you can be invaded and you can summon people in. You also have a 30% health boost when you're embered. But again, it's like being human. Where is the, the soul that I started with? Where Where is that in my inventory? The sword is only bequeathed to chosen, chosen Ash as judged by the Iodex who awaits their arrival of Ash as a scabbard. All right. Hey, Jay, how are you doing? Any plans on playing Mass Effect Andromeda? It'd be nice to hear your opinion. Anyway, good luck with Dark Souls. Thank you. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure uh, about uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. I've never played it, so maybe if I... I've just never bought it. If I do end up picking it up, I'll stream it. I did beat Pontiff without parrying him, but I, Keith also, I also had Keith come in and help me. <laughs> uh, just because we, I was like, let's co-op a little bit, even though I hadn't even tried him once. So I honestly can't say what Pontiff is like on New Game uh, without parrying him. I have no idea. But on New Game and New Game Plus, or New Game Plus and New Game Plus Plus, I just absolutely destroyed him. Oh, it's, it, the soul of a nameless soldier is the one that it gives us. I see. I thought it had a special name, but I guess not. My least favorite boss in Dark Souls 3, though. I don't know. There are none that I, like, outright disliked. Oh, okay. Where, where, where are you going, buddy? What? I should have kicked him off. Um, I don't know. Like, I didn't really hate any of them. Um, there's a couple different ways to go here. Let's just make sure we're... Especially at the beginning of the game, it's important that you... Collect everything, you know? Because we didn't go with easy mode fire gem to start out with. Is this your first playthrough? It is not. Hold on to that broken straight sword. You gotta make the great sword of Artorius. There is a... There is a uh, an Artorius sword... I mean, it's not called that. There are a lot of references in this game. I'll try to point them all out to the first Dark Souls as well as Demon Souls. I don't know what the sword is. By the way, there's a guy up there. Uh, we can leave him be. You can cheese him by having him run off the cliff, but we won't do that. We'll just we'll att we'll go and fight him at a time when it seems more uh, prudent. So Ember is similar to humanity. The difference is there's no item find associated with it. You just have one Ember active, and if you die, you lose it. Uh, and then you can repop it to get the 30% health boost and be able to do online stuff. He doesn't know we're here. He doesn't know. I'm so sorry, doggy. You don't deserve this. Come sa. Alrighty. Let's go check out home base. Oh, Deacons of the Deep. Yeah, good point. Pretty much all the ones you can cheese. Well, they're not even, they're not even like, cheesable. They're just, you know, weird. I don't mind those. I don't think those are bad bosses. I think those are necessary. Hello? Welcome to the bonfire, unkindled one. I'm a firekeeper. I tend to the flame and tend to thee. The lords have left their thrones, and must be delivered to them. To this end, I am at thy side. Okay, so this is the equivalent of the uh, Maiden in Black from Demon Souls or the Emerald Herald from Dark Souls 2. Ashen One, to be unkindled is to be a vessel for souls. Sovereignless souls will become thy strength. I will show thee how. Ashen One, bring me souls plucked from their vessels. Very well. Then touch the darkness within me. Take nourishment from these sovereignless souls. Oh, that's the name of the thing, I guess, that we that we brought with us. All right, what do we need to level realistically to get where we want to go? So dexterity, dexterity, faith is what we need early. I want to get to 18 dex. 
uh, and then faith to as high as we can get it eventually. But realistically, we're just going to need health. Uh, we're just going to need health and endurance, so let's do that now. Uh, and um, let's just get up to 10 intelligence now so I don't have to worry about it later. That's so we can talk to, uh, I don't know, that one guy, Orbeck. Farewell, Ashen One. May the... Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to cut you off there, lady. Okay, so this is Firelink Shrine. Similar to, like, Majula or Firelink Shrine from Dark Souls 1. So we can walk around and, like, talk to who's here, right? Not many people right now. A pleasure to make thine acquaintance, Ashen One. I am but a humble handmaid of the shrine. Weapons, armor, trinkets, and spells. I've lots of little things to ease the burden of a weary traveler. And yes, I'm undead too, but not so charitable as to give my goods away. Ashen One, fetch souls and bring them to me. As is thy want, no? <laughs> Ashen One, if my wares are not to thy satisfaction, bring me umbral ash. With ash, I'll fashion new wares. Is it not our sorry fate? To sup on death. <laughs> oh, I'll sup all right. So the nice thing here is immediately all the vendors you can just sell stuff to. Such a pain to not have that prior Fashion to this. One. Mm. Okay. And look, it's Andre. Well, a newcomer, I see. I am Andre. I serve at this shrine as a humble smith forging weapons. You're in search of the Lords of Cinder, I trust. A toilsome journey, I wager. You'll require good arms. Let me smith you weapons. I am a smith. Such is my purpose. Should have done this blind. Yeah, I read your earlier comment. Thank you. Uh, okay, so we don't need any of these Ashen Estus flasks, so we'll just put them all into the health. Uh, so Reinforce Estus works the same in two, as it did in 2, where you need Estus flask shards. Uh, and then there's the reinforcement and the infusion. It's all, it's very similar to 2. The upgrade system's a lot more similar to 2 than it is to 1, I think. Um, but you just do it all here with Andre. You don't have to warp around the world and talk to different blacksmiths or anything like that. Weapons and protection are sturdy enough by and large. But when overused, they'll eventually break. When their durability is low, repair becomes a necessity. Use a powder, or simply rest at a bonfire. But should chance impel them break, bring them me. I'll hammer them back into shape. They take no pleasure in breaking, I assure ye. So handle them with care, if you would. Never had a single weapon break in Dark Souls 3. There are two ways to smith weapons. Simple reinforcement is one, and infusion the other. Reinforcement is straightforward. It strengthens a weapon without altering its property. Infusion is a more advanced form of smithing that infuses an element. Reinforcement requires titanite, and infusion Requires gems. Bring the stones, and I'll do the smithing. It's my purpose, after all. In battle, your weapons are your only friends. Forge them well, and they won't let you down. Hurrah! Ma, another matter. Infusing weapons with gems requires a special kind of coal. My humble coals won't be any use infusing more unusual gems. I know, it's an awful shame, but it's all I have. Oh, please don't give me that look. Believe it or not, 
I'm quite thin-skinned. <laughs> ah, the good old creepy laughter. I think that's... Oh, by the way. Nope. If you find any Estus shards, bring them here. They can be used to reinforce either of your Estus flasks. Without those flasks, you'd want for life or focus. And they'll always stay with you. Why not treat them well? Huh? <laughs> yeah, this is kind of fourth wall breaking for Dark Souls. That's for sure. But I, th I, I do think that the, the crafting system is the one thing that's always needed uh, the most introduction. Nothing else is really explained. There's two more people to talk to here. Ah, another one roused from the sleep of death. Well, you're not alone. We unkindled are worthless. Can't even die right. <laughs> Gives me conniptions. And they'd have us seek the Lords of Cinder and return them to their molding thrones. But we're talking true legends with the metal to link the fire. We're not fit to lick their boots. So you can guess who this guy's supposed to be. I wish they would have just gotten the same voice actor again. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> so that's the crestfallen warrior, except he's, his name is Hawkwood in here. What a sick joke. Asking us to seek the Lords of Cinder and return them to their molding thrones. We're talking true legends, those who would link the fire. Oh, okay. So he already said that. So uh, we're going to go and talk to the single Lord of Cinder who has not abandoned his throne. Up here. All that unkindled, and a seeker of lords. I am Ludleth of Corland. Look not in bewilderment as I say. I linked the fire long ago, becoming the Lord of Cinder. If substantiation be thy want, set thine eyes upon my child cause. This sad cadaver, no need to be coy. Have a closer look. Knowest thou of our purpose? Five thrones will take five lords as kindling for the linking of the fire. The fast-fading flame must be licked to preserve this world. A reenactment of the first linking of the fire. So it is, I became a Lord of Cinder. I may be but small, but I will die a colossus. You said it, buddy. Treat the firekeeper not with discourtesy. She is much like thee. Prisoners both kept to link the fire. Alrighty. Now we can actually get started. Now we can actually play the game. <laughs> but again, the implication is these five thrones were five people that had linked the fire, similar to if you link the fire in Dark Souls 1, you would be, if you choose to link the fire, you become a, a Lord of Cinder. Gwyn was the first Lord of Cinder. So that's why he it was around to defend the first flame. So uh, these five people at some point had also linked the flame. Uh, the person at the very top, we can actually go and read the thrones, uh, is the prince of the current kingdom. You are the giant. These are who we saw in the opening cutscenes. Watchers of the Abyss. And then up here, Holy King Lothric, last hope of his line. The idea is he was supposed to link the fire, and he said, nah, I'm not going to do it. So the first fire was like, well, shit, let's resurrect these other guys who, are his, who have already done it. And they resurrected them, and they're like, you know what? Nah, we're not going to either, except L Ludlith, but it needs all five of them to do it. And uh, so our job is to go and find them and uh, kill them and bring them back <laughs> so that they'll fucking do it. Okay, so we are going to head to the High Wall of Lothric. Here we go! Interestingly enough, there's no way to walk to the first level. You have to warp there. And as we get further and further into the game, there's some specific stuff that makes it intriguing to think about 
where Firelink Shrine really even exists in the world and how it doesn't actually connect to any other part of it. Okay. Here we go. 